Hi everyone, in this tutorial I want to talk about something that I think doesn't receive much attention in the Blender Geometry Nodes community. Geometry Nodes interfaces, modifier tab, UI, group sockets, however you would name it. I'm talking about that part when you created your super useful reusable system and now you don't want to mess with nodes every time, but you want to have the main setting exposed here, in the modifier tab. So everyone knows that you can just drop a cable from group input, but there's so much more to that, especially in the newer Blender versions. You can create panels, different types of sliders, ranges, description of parameters, even list type menus. So today I want to show you how to create this type of interface for a really simple system. Without further ado, let's jump into Blender. So I created this simple system. You can download it if you want to follow along, link in the description. I will briefly describe how it works now. So, we have a simple plane, subdivide a little, and then we scale it to different proportions, subdivide it more, and create a displacement with some noise textures. After that, I scatter some points and place different instances on them. The last thing is add to a little bit randomization to that instances. Pretty simple. I want to create an interface so I can reuse this setup in the future. So let's think about what parameters would be useful. First, the scale in the X and Y directions, ground resolution, different objects to scatter, density of scattered points, and some sort of seed value for sure. So let's start creating this interface and expand it in the process. Let's create parameters, depth, width, and resolution. As you can see, currently we have the same name for two of them. So the first question is how to rename the input socket label. You can do this inside the note editor under the end panel. If you scroll under the group section at the bottom, we have a group socket category. Here, when you double click on the socket name, you can change it to anything you like. Besides that, we have many more settings than just a name. First, we can specify a type. This is correctly a float, but you can choose between all geometry node types. For example, for seed, we will use an integer type, which is a whole numbers, one, two, three, and so on, without the decimals. The next parameter is the description. Let's fill it, in. for example, with uh, additional scale in x direction. Now, when we hover over this socket in the modifier tab, as you can see, we have our description popping out. Great. The next one is a default attribute. We will not use that because we don't have any specific attribute, but for example, you can use maybe the UV map attribute to use it as default in some cases. The next one, the subtype, will display our float attribute in different ways, such as an angle, length, percentage, and few others. It all depends on what parameter you want to describe. The default value is used when we add our geometry node modifier to a new object. So for example, you want to start with the X and Y scale of 1. The next one, the minimum and maximum values are pretty easy. Here we just don't want to have the negative scale, so the minimum should be set to zero. Those are the main options for sockets. For the resolution, I will just set the maximum value to six, and the type should be an integer. Now let's create some more sockets to make a more complex menu. Let's plug in these four parameters. They will control the displacement effect on the plane. Let's call it intensity and scale. As you can see, now our interface is getting pretty confusing. It would be nice to separate the big noise displacement from the small one. And from the main settings too. Luckily, we can do this with panels. Under the end panel, let's create three new panels and call them main settings, big noise, and small noise. Now we can just drag and drop the sockets into the right panel. With the drag and drop, 
we can also change the order of the sockets. For panels, we only have two options, description and close by default checkbox. When you add this modifier to a new object, the panels will be closed if the checkbox is selected. Let's add our missing descriptions. Our interface is starting to look nice. Let's add the last section, scattering settings. Let's add new sockets. Seed. Density. This boolean checkbox. And this probability value. Lastly, I will plug this menu node. The menu switch is one of the newer nodes that allows switching between different geometry or fields with a nice drop-down list. To create it, you just need to add a menu switch and plug in all the options. To change the name of sockets, just go to the end panel, node section, and under the menu items, you can double-click and rename the item name. Let's plug the menu input to our group input. And now we have this nice drop-down list to choose between different instance types. Awesome! Now we can group all the sockets that control instancing into a new panel named Scatter Geometry. I will add descriptions to all new sockets now too. As you can see, we use different types like integer, boolean and different subtypes for float, percentage. The percentage works perfectly for our random deletion because we determine how many percent we want to delete. The last things that I would like to mention is this icon near some parameters. What is it? If I click on this icon near the density parameter, as you can see our scattered geometry disappears. This new place is basically for putting custom attributes. One of the most common use cases is weight painting. Let's create a new vertex group and call it mask. Now let's use it for our modifier. If I go to weight painting mode now, I can start painting. The only problem is that we have too few number. A maximum weight is one. To better use this custom attribute option, we should modify our setup a little bit. In the geometry nodes, let's add a new parameter, mask, and multiply this new parameter with our density with math multiply node. Now let's switch the mask vertex group and put it in the mask socket and reverse our density to the previous state. As you can see, everything works perfectly now. So now you know how to use these icons. So now we notice that this option is useful for such things like density, but not so much like width. We can turn off this option if we go to the end panel, select socket and scroll to the bottom. Now let's check the single value option. This will get rid of the extra button. Perfect. Let's talk about the two remaining option. Height in the modifier will just hide the socket in the modifier tab, and the hide value option works in the geometry node interface only. Let's check it for the width and the depth. Now let's rename our system to custom system here. And now let's add the default cube, create a new geometry node system, and add our custom system node. As you can see, we don't see the values from depth and width. 
If I change now this option to false and back here, as you can see, we, have, we can change the values directly in the node. One more thing that we can do to the system is add a custom object scattering. It would be really nice if we could choose not only predefined geometries, but our own too. To do this, I will create an object info node and plug it into our menu. Let's change the name to custom and plug it into our group input. Check the as instance option and now we can choose any object we want. Let's add Susan Monkey to our scene and use it as our custom object for scattering. Perfect. So, this would be it for this tutorial. As you can see, Blender gives us a lot of possibilities to customize the interfaces for our Geometry Nodes systems. I hope you learned something new today. Thanks for watching. You can download the final file link in the description. If you want to support my channel, you can also check my Blender add-ons and asset packs, link also in the description. Thanks again for watching, see you again soon, and bye!